Hey, everybody, this episode of Our Kids Play Hockey is brought to you by our title sponsor, NHL Sense Arena. Look, we all want our kids to succeed in hockey, but let's face it, finding training that's both effective and enjoyable can be a real challenge, and not to mention expensive and a total drain on time, especially if you have to drive to the rink, uh, pay a, a private instructor. There's so many reasons that uh, money gets spent on this game. But that's where NHL Sense Arena steps in. It's a virtual reality training game that brings the rink into your home that takes off-ice training to a new reality. It's designed to improve hockey sense and IQ, something that's lacking majorly in the game today for both players and goalies. And you get unlimited access to over 100 drills and training plans from top coaches and players that can be played anytime, anywhere with drills approved by USA Hockey player and goalie development directors. Look, improving mental hockey skills at home has really never been more fun and any hockey player that uses this is going to have a blast, all right? I've used this before on my own, and it feels like you're so immersed in an arena, you sometimes forget you have a headset on. And again, it's not being on the ice, but it allows you to work on some of these skill sets like scanning, as I said before, hockey IQ, looking around the rink, making the right plays, that getting those repetitions in now as a hockey player are super important for your development. So NHL Sense Arena is giving all the listeners an exclusive offer for $50 off an annual plan when you use our code Hockey Never Stops at checkout. Again, that's Hockey Never Stops. All you got to do is go to hockey.sensearena.com. Uh, Again, that's hockey.sensearena.com. Use the code Hockey Never Stops, and you'll save $50 on your an annual plan of NHL Sense Arena. Make sure to check that out and enjoy this episode of Our Kids Play Hockey. Hello, hockey skaters and goalies around the world, and welcome to another edition of the Ride to the Rink. I'm Lee Elias, and I'm with Mike Benelli. And today, we're going to talk about something. There's a little phrase I like to say: "Success leaves clues." Success leaves clues if you put your phone down and look up for a minute. Now, listen, this is going to be a funny topic today, but Mike and I wanted to go over this thing about when you go to hockey camps or new hockey places or find new people, the importance of kind of being emotionally aware of the people around you and not having your head buried in the phone. And we, we've watched videos about this. We've seen people talk about this, Mike, where we see coaches that, Hey, when we're talking phones down, when you're at dinner phone down, because the relationships you can establish with other people will help you grow as a human being. Like I said, success leaves clues, but you have to be looking for those clues if you want to find them. Yeah, and I would even it would even go further than just not having your phone, right? Because I think back in the day, you know, we didn't have phones. Yeah, you'd have kids that would just go sit in the corner, or they just sit by themselves, or you know, you say, "Hey, who'd you meet at camp today?" And like, I don't meet anybody really. Like, <laughs> I think you, I think you need to have a conscious choice to go into, you know, and it, right now I'm hearing it a lot because you're seeing all the development camps and you're seeing all the these are NHL hockey players, like men it, going into a program, being told, "Hey, you know what the best success you're going to have is." later on after hockey. And how do you build that success? Well, you build it in this room, the people you're going to be in the room with. And I would bring that right back down to, you go to a power skating camp, you go to, you know, it's really, the discussion really is around those week long hockey camps. If you're in a program like four or five days or a weekend camp or sleepaway camp, really try to think about what can I do? And the phone is a huge part of it. There's no doubt about it. I think it's an older, um, you know, the, the directors and the people that run these programs, I think they, probably zone in on the phone easy, you know, more because they see every kid at the table with their head down. But I think it's more about the conscious decision to say, if I can just put my phone down or put the other things that are outside of what I'm doing in the moment right now down, how can I broaden the cultural experience that I'm getting? And I, and I think it has to just be, it can't just be about hockey. It's got to be talking to your teammate, talking to the, the person on the left of you, speaking to goaltenders, speaking to defensemen, forwards, finding out from other coaches what they like in players, what they don't like in players. And really any kid can have this. I've had this conversation with, with eight year olds that ask me the, the greatest questions in the world and 16 year olds that will, that will really kind of dig in and dive in to, you know, getting something out of the camp other than hockey skill. And I think it's so important. And I think because of the phones and because of the, the, the ability to go to a camp and play Xbox, you know, in your dorm room, all night is why this conversation comes up because we got to find ways to unplug and reconnect with the people that we're in the program with and what better time to do it in, a, in, a, in an environment where, you know, 
you're maybe not going to see any of these players ever again. You're only seeing them for a couple of days, a couple of hours. So get to know them, let them get to know you, make a great impression, and then and then find ways to, you know, just build your inner self and your own ability by being a part of what everybody else is doing. Well, I know a lot of the kids listening are saying, but I play Xbox and Call of Duty to make friends, and that's how I make friends. And look, it's true. You can communicate and have a lot of fun there, but the human-to-human interaction, especially in a team environment, it's a skill. It's a skill set that you need to learn. And Mike, you know, it's funny. You remind us, a good friend of ours, Bryce Salvador, used to be captain of the New Jersey Devils. I remember he told us uh, one time about as he uh, got older in the league and more established, one of the big changes from when he started was after practice, after games, a lot of the younger players would get their phones out and they would not interact. And he had to take it upon himself as a leader to make sure that that wasn't happening and saying, listen, we're going to get together. We're going to spend time together as people and learn a lot about each other. And that team ended up, you know, going to the Stanley cup final at one point. So those interactions and your ability to make friends, or this is the other half of it. If you see, as Mike said earlier, the kid in the corner, right. Or the kid who's by himself, that you make it a part of your leadership to go up to that person, introduce yourself and start a conversation. You don't know how far that can go kids when you're listening to me right now, when you make the initiative to go and talk to somebody that can be really brighten someone's day. Oh God. So, and, and how hard is that? Right. That's so hard to do as a 15 year old or 10 year old right. or 16 year old. Like it's so hard to see another kid and then you being vulnerable enough to go over and sit with that player. Or, you know, if you don't feel comfortable in that environment, seek them out at a later time in the day. When, when you're in line, you're on the bench, like, Hey, after practice today, you want to eat with us right. or Hey, you know, we're, we're having meal time or we're doing a snack time or Hey, the guys at room 316 are having uh, popcorn tonight. You want to come join us because we don't know where other kids are from. And it's so comforting right. like that. I think as parents, we try to put our kids in like, Oh, we're going to go to this camp. Who else is going to be in the camp? Right. Well, the hell, you know, you know, because it doesn't cause matter. We, yeah. We other want kids. Our own, we want our own comfort. <laughs> go in there. You're going to yeah. meet friends, but then you got to remember there's other kids that maybe can't do that. Go out, seek yeah. those, those players and, and kind of bring them into your circle. Right. We, we always talk about how great players make all the other players around them better. That's true off the ice too. A great leader will make everybody around them a better teammate. Uh, so whether you're on either side of that aisle, make sure you take the initiative to interact this summer, interact in your camps or during the winter or during your season, your ability to interact with another person face to face is a massive, massive skill set that you're going to want to develop when you're talking to teammates, when you're talking to coaches. Eventually, you'll be talking to people interviewing you for a job. Uh, it's something you're going to want to do now. So, fantastic topic, Mike. And uh, yeah, this has been another episode of the Ride to the Rink. If you have questions, topics, or you want to talk to Mike, myself, or Christy about anything that we talked about, email us at team at ourkidsplayhockey.com. If you want more Ride to the Rink episodes, head over to ourkidsplayhockey.com or go for Our Kids Play Hockey on whatever podcast network you listen to and look for the Ride to the Rink episode. That's going to do it for this edition. I'm Lee. That's Mike. Skate on and have a great week, everybody. Bye.